We're at the 2019 Tour de France and myself and Lloyd are on the hunt for the hottest pro bikes. And my tech sense is tingling because I've heard there's some new models lurking about as well as some tasty paint jobs. So before we get continuing with the hunt, make sure you subscribe to GCN if you haven't already and also click the little bell icon as it gives you a notification every time we upload a video. It's free and it helps support the channel. Right, let's get to it. We couldn't do a hottest bike list at this year's tour without including this, the brand new Cannondale Super 6 Evo, the new improved aero version of the previous Evo. And this belongs to Rigoberto Aran of the EF Education First team. And it's the first time I've seen this bike in these particular colours. So it's got the EF colours on there with the kind of purple fade paintwork with a bit of little little bit of pink in there as well, which is kind of nice and it goes really well with the tan sidewalls. Now interestingly this bike is available to the EF team in both rim and disc and perhaps even more interesting than that there's been a bit of a split between the riders. They were offered both, some of the riders, half the team, I think four of them have opted for the disc brake version and the other half of the team said no I want the rim brake version. So pretty interesting either way as the mechanics reckon they can get both the bikes to the 6.8 kilogram UCI weight limit. This one, I weighed it, it's coming in just over 6.9 kilograms, which I suspect is deliberate just in case the UCI scales are off. But a very hot bike indeed, aero and lightweight. Nice. You were expecting this one, weren't you? You can't do the coolest bikes of the Tour de France and not feature one of Peter Sagan's. Uh, this is the specialised S-Works Venge that he'll be using on the flatter stage of the Tour de France, although he does, of course, have access to the lighter weight Tarmac too. Now, for the first time ever, Sagan will be starting the first road stage of the Tour de France in normal Bora Hansgrohe kit, albeit with the rainbow bands around the cuffs here. And that is because he's no longer world champion and he's no longer national champion either. But that doesn't mean he doesn't get a custom bike, of course. Gone is the green glitter from last year, which John Canning showed on a pro bike video. Ian is a slightly more subtle glitter over the top of grey, which transitions into the matte grey that you'll see at the top and here coming through to the back. He's got his name written here on the top tube, his initials at the front of the top tube there. And on the inside of the chainstay at the back here, he's got his list of world championship victories. Three, of course, at the moment that he won in consecutive years. The first one was back in 2015 in Richmond, then Doha in 2016, and finally Bergen in 2017. Wonder when the next one will be? Probably not too far away. One of the hottest bikes for me at this year's tour is definitely Alejandro Valverde's custom Canyon Ultimate CFS LX. And it's custom because, well, it's painted to celebrate his victory in the UCI World Road Race Championships back in Inbrook. He's the current world champion. And so we've got rainbow bands on his frame and uh, this beautiful gold on the top tube here. There's a load of other cool rainbow features. So on the wheels, we've got rainbow details. Even on his Physique Antares saddle, we've got little rainbow bands. But my personal favorite is the rainbow finishing tape on the Lizard Skins bar tape. That is seriously cool. It looks awesome. Also, Valverde is using the uh, same Canyon cockpit with a 120 stem and 41 centimeter bars as me. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically Valverde, aren't I? I am almost certain that this is going to be the lightest of all the bikes that we feature in this particular video because currently it's weighing in at 6.66 kilograms, which is well under the UCI's minimum weight limit. It is the brand new Pinarello Dogma F12 X Lite that belongs to Colombian climbing sensation Egan Bernal of Team Ineos. Pinarello have managed to reduce the weight of this frame set by 60 grams over the standard F12 and that comes down to the fact that they've used T1100G 1K aerospace carbon weave which you can find out all about when I come out with this as a pro bike in a future video. Now interestingly Gary Blen, the chief mechanic at Team Ineos said that they will not be putting artificial weight on this bike in order to get it up to that minimum 6.8 kilograms but rather just swapping out a few of the components until they get to that point. Maybe the bottle cages are something slightly heavier or even the bolts at the seat clamp here. Also what he said that was interesting was that they will get it up to 6.85 kilograms. There's a good reason for that. They're worried about a discrepancy between their own scales and the ones that the UCI will be using to measure the bike before the start of a race. 
This is the Colnago V2R of Dan Martin from UAE Team Emirates. Now this is a deceptively hot bike. I say deceptively hot because this V2R is like no other. Well, it is like one other. It's 200 grams lighter than the standard V2R and only Fabio Aru and Dan Martin have this super lightweight version. And as a result, the team mechanics have got it to 6.8 kilograms. Although it's not currently in 6.8 kilogram mode as it's got clinchers on it with tubeless tires. And Dan's gonna be running these on the flatter stages because they're more aerodynamic and the uh, tires have lower rolling resistance. But when he hits the mountains, in go the tubulars and it goes right on to 6.8 UCI limit. Very nice. super hot bike. This is the brand new Scott Addict RC of team leader from Mitchells and Scott, Adam Yates. I say brand new because, well, it's literally brand new. He's just got hold of it and he's not actually ridden it or raced on it yet. And it's also the brand new Scott Addict. So the new Scott Addict has had a makeover. Like many of the climbing bikes we're seeing, it's gone aero. So we've got the dropped seat stays, the D-shaped seat posts, the aero tube profiles, and this really swanky looking aero cockpit. And all the cables are fully integrated in here. You just can't spot the cables at all. So you imagine it's very slippery through the wind. And it's gone disc brake only now. The previous one was rim and disc, but now just disc brakes. Anyhow, I think it looks absolutely stunning. It's currently in a sort of flat stage mode. So we've got the deeper 60 wheels in and a close ratioed 11.25 cassette. But you can expect Adam to be swapping that out for some shallower wheels and a bigger cassette once he hits the mountains. Right, I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the hottest pro bikes here at the Tour. And if you'd like to see any of the bikes in this video in more detail, then we've got full pro bike videos either available now or they will be in the near future. And if you'd like to get your hands on one of these awesome GCN Alpe d'Huez t-shirts, complete with Dutch corner, there, check it out, then, well, you're in luck. They're available in the GCN shop. You can click down here. Going now. Bye.